and welcome to the atrium. I'm Sheila DeLuca and together with me in Niagara, we are excited to continue the atrium. As you would think of growing, cultivating, and harvesting your garden, conversations on the atrium will focus on planting your seeds for a healthy, hopeful, optimistic, bright future. Our shows will focus on a theme based on the guest star's experience from motivation and encouragement. Here on the atrium, our intention is to allow for the conversations to be genuine and open regarding where we go from here and what matters most. Our stories hope to inspire the professional and business communities, the volunteer programs, and families. Our guests are the exemplars of active business and community leaders and critical thinkers whose word matches their action, because that is what we need now, action. Today we're at the hub on Queen Street in downtown Niagara Falls, where people come to connect. And we are joined by Sarah Carter, David Bryan, and Amy Shaw. And together, they connect to form the 905 Intergalactic Artist Collective. Well, good afternoon. Welcome to the hub and to the atrium. It's so wonderful, wonderful to have you here with us today. So you are the Intergalactic Artist Collective. And where is the, your inspiration for the name come from? We all, we're a group of uh, both seasoned and veteran artists and emerging artists as well. Uh, we've all come together to try and create a collaboration of different types of mixed media arts and things like that. Our name is mostly composed of the 905, is us from the area that we're all located in. The uh, intergalactic part is that we're both very like far off and very uh, inspir inspired by our pieces and we also have um, very fully imaginative like pieces that we're making and uh, it shows in all the creativity of our work. Uh, the collective, well, that's just it. We're a team together so this is how we kind of came up with the full name for our group and where it came from. Excellent. And it was formed, it was formed here in Niagara, yes. the three of you. How are you all connected together? Um, me and Sarah have known each other through like different projects and things like that. We've been friends for almost 20 years and stuff like that. Uh, Amy came into our collective because she is friends with Sarah. They have done other previous artworks and things like that together. And Bart is an art critic that is unfortunately not with us here today. But him and uh, Sarah have worked on many other pieces in previous past together. And they like to go out and they actually venture and tour through all the different art like collectives and uh, galleries and stuff like that together, critiquing and inventing and being very creative with new works of art. And what is your mission with 905? Our mission as a collective is to bring art back to the people that are looking for happiness and a sense of well-being to like come together as a community. Um, our collective has a very large multitude of skill sets, whether we're doing resin working, paintings, like fabric tailoring, making all sorts of cool things, metal sculptures, big and small. And there's nothing that we really can't do or no challenge that we like to overcome. We basically turn like, all our dreams into creations. Amy, what is your specialized form in the collective? Well, I'm a tailor. I, I've worked with fabric all my life, and I, I did have a brief foray. I went to art school when I was basically a child, but I, yeah, I enjoy color. I enjoy working with the arts and artists as well, so I kind of got brought into the fold and we're working on sculptures, and so my expertise comes in with fabric a lot of the time. Excellent. And, and Sarah, your services, what do you provide to the, the collective mostly? I'm the fun. <laughs> <laughs> You're the fun, even before we were, yeah. yeah, we're laughing. I'm an artist by trade, so I'm a painter, uh, so I come up with ideas and I sketch and I've helped with the website as well as online and to help with the creation of it as well and painting it and doing the dips of Paverpool with Amy of the fabric to cover it. And and David, your job? I'd say role? mostly I do a lot of things that are like technology based and stuff like that. I do a lot of the computer work and things like that on top of it. I do a lot of the metal working. So I do little things from anything from making small like roses and things like that, like the Enchanted Rose from Beauty and the Beast, all the way up to giant staircases, metal sculptures and things like that. I do a lot of welding equipment and repair for a living. So I kind of just followed through with my entire career and actually now bringing it out and bringing it into a bigger perspective for the world. So you made these beautiful roses right here. Yes, I did. Display. And behind us is the Inspector Connected. Yes. Yes, and you put this together, is this correct? Yes. 
This is with the help of them as well. They decided to do all the color scheming, the wire wrapping and things like that. I just mostly pertain to like the metal working of the objects. Right. Well, it's very beautiful and you can tell that you came together to formulate this and it's very, it's very beautiful and the, on display here at the hub. We're all connected. I love how it is. It is connected all together and you see many different hearts in the piece as well and um, the bigger piece. Yes, it was made out of rebar that we scrapped that were actually in the shape of candy canes, so we had to take off the tops, So that and the rebar is as big as my car could hold, so that's how big the sculpture got to be for this particular one. Okay. And then these are the ends cut off and then put together to make five mini parts inside of the large heart. That's great. That's and then we went to Ken Salvage and found all this colorful wire, and we couldn't resist it. Oh, wow. So Amy and I worked together to weave it through it, yeah. and David welded it for us. It's beautiful. It's great to have a team of people to have a vision, and then when the vision is worked on and it comes to to fruition, it comes alive, right? And together you're able to do that, which is wonderful. So it's great teamwork that you have going on here as well, right? I read on your social media page and your Facebook page that the creativity process has five stages, and I'll just read them. The preparation, the incubation, the insight stage, the evaluation stage, and the elaboration stage. Can you tell us or describe to us what goes into each of those stages? I think it's a lot of discussion and back and forth and brainstorming and talking about what will work and what can work. And we will draw something and sometimes David will take a pencil and say that can't work, it has to go this way. And so literally just all of our ideas coming together. There's a fair amount of trial and error. I was going right? to say, yeah, it seems like the process of like each different stage that we do, preparation is more like a brainstorming kind of thing where we're throwing ideas at each other. The incubation is more like where we're actually like picking some of these things, kind of putting them in a little think tank to actually figure out what would work. Uh, the insight and evaluation stage, the insight is each one of us will actually put in our own educated actual like skill set. So what will, if this will work for fabric, if this will work for color, if this will work for dynamics or engineering, we all have our own skill set that we put in for that. And then we actually get into the evaluation period and which one we actually like vote for which way we're going to go with the process of this project. And then we actually come together to make the entire elaboration happen where we're in the garage, the shop working, where these guys are out in the backyards picking colors, doing all the beautiful things. And it actually comes together to be a finalized project. Right, so all your skill sets together brings a masterpiece together, right? Absolutely. Right to fruition, to creation, which with, in the creative process, I can see Amy or Sarah, you're brainstorming and then you bring it to Dave and what happens is you're like, no, I can't physically do that. It's a great idea, but... Yeah, we have had a few of those where we try to design different things like that and just from like an engineering perspective due to like weights or structuring, how to like actually design and build some of these things together. We unfortunately like they do look really cool, but we have to be able to be able to design something like an engineering perspective that will actually stand or hold weight or be able to be used like for whatever purpose or reason that it's for. So sometimes some of the cooler ideas, unfortunately, we just maybe don't have enough of the actual like um, the dynamic behind it to make it come to fruition but a lot of the times we do have enough skill sets between the, all three of us four of us to make these things come together so with that being said Sarah what inspires you the most is it a particular song is it a particular image or painting what inspires you to create your art I think it's just being mindful of what you're around so it can be a conversation that's had like hey we should make this what can we do with this um, Amy and I are big upcyclers, so we'll pull over on the side of the road and find something quite often. Really? Um, or, <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, we have a bird cage in the car as we speak. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Perfect. Um, Recycling. And so a color or a class or a movie or a song on the radio or seeing other people's art mm -hmm. is a big one. Seafoam. Seafoam. <laughs> it, it's an all encompassing for a lot foam. of shades of green and blue, but seafoam is our is our connected <laughs> joke. <Yes. laughs> okay. And what is your inspiration, Amy? Me? Uh, all about, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's all about the raw materials. Uh, like I, like Sarah said, sometimes we pull over to the side of the road and we find something. I, I, 
I love going to the fabric store and just, you know, buying something without a real plan. And then when I get home, I can kind of just start cutting and going. Um, when it comes to the wires of Inspector Connected, it was just, it was about like first sorting and then, and then pulling what we wanted and then kind of just going with where the sculpture wanted us. It, it's just, mm -hmm. I, yeah, like Sarah said, it's being mindful of what's around you and raw materials for me always. Mm -hmm. And Dave? Me, I'm more inspired by like the future, sci like science, technology, things like that, that nothing in the world is impossible, that we'll always find a way through the future to make things come together to be able to build things, that nothing is without grasp or without your reach, that you can always reach further to go get it, that science will find its way and that, you know, technology helps us be able to create some of these things that you couldn't do 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, that I'm inspired that things will always just keep moving forward. And one thing I'm taking away from what you're all inspired by is this being mindful and being present in the moment. And I think when you're mindful and present in the moment, your let say your hands are empty and your heart is open, right? And your your heart is open, your eyes you have clear vision, your eyes are open to seeing new ways of doing things. Absolutely, right? creativity has to find you working. Right, and it's, sometimes that's probably difficult for people to do, right? To have a, this open heart, this open mind, this open vision of what could of what could be, what the possibilities right? are. Because, yes, exactly. It's a lifestyle and a mindset. Yeah, the the openness. It's it sometimes very difficult to maintain, but we. I mean, that's part of being a collective. We can really spur each other on in that openness, in that sort of mindfulness, and in that presence. And you probably get a lot of comfort from each other as well and inspiration from each other. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. That's why there are three of us. Right. <laughs> right. But it's not more. how you weather the storm, it's how you dance in the rain, right? <laughs> right, absolutely. So what are some of the current pieces you have displayed around Niagara Falls? Well, this is Sarah. She has a lot more paintings and things like that that they're all over the place here. Yeah. Um, we have right now at Heart Niagara, we have Bronze Arrhythmia, which is a fabric heart, um, which is made out of all upcycled material and... And it's an anatomical heart, not the talent. Yeah, it's an actual, like, real anatomical heart with, like, aortas and everything else, like, it's kind of, it's a little gross, but kind of very cool looking. <laughs> I did see that, that was it was beautiful. Amy's <laughs> idea to make an anatomical heart, yeah. so we've done that, but we used completely upcycled material at that point because it was COVID and we couldn't get out to buy anything. So it is made out of like literal tin foil and leftover wire, an old blouse, some fabric, some Halloween decor that was like a, a mesh. It, we also used cheesecloth from the jam that was left over <laughs> in the kitchen one day and Paver pulled it together. And then I found a candy stand on the side of the road and that's what David cut a hole in and we were able to epoxy it in and so that's at Heart Niagara. We have Strawberry Moon over at Cat and Monkey, and that is, was made for the Canada Day Parade by Amy and I, and it's a, a large moon on top of a pair of legs that are mannequin legs left over from our tailor, of course. It's her idea to cover them and do something with them. We have Inspector Connected here at the Hub, and we do have one other. I was to say, well, besides that, they have different paintings and things as well that are also displayed on at Heart Niagara as well. She has paintings at Cat Monkey. We do have some of our roses here that were produced for the, um, it was the winter market in St. Catharines. We were able to produce some of these. We had some poppies for Veterans Day and things like that. We've made it. Also, our newest sculpture that we have yet to unveil on the 23rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th of September here is in the Arms of Love, mm -hmm. which is a giant nine foot tall, 12 foot wide sculpture that will be lit up with red and white lighting that is made here for the Niagara Night Art. And uh, it's all made out of recycled materials that were donated from a job I did uh, at a bar for re uh, retrofitting some chairs that were able to actually like mold and shape into a giant actual heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm very interested in this piece in the Arms of Love. What was the inspiration behind it? The, the arms of love? inspiration behind it was it actually 
was something we didn't even know we were going to start doing. I was laying in my hammock in my backyard one day, just kind of relaxing and things like that, and kind of drifting on and off. I had had a few of my friends pass during like the pandemic time and not being able to get together. And it came to me in a daydream that I was actually just like laying there and um, wasn't even like sure how we were going to get this started or what it really was at the beginning. We started off making small metal objects, roses, different things. She had some recipes. We were trying to really figure out what we were doing. And we started creating a business doing it. Mm-hmm. As we started, the inspiration started coming from like the Ontario Arts Council and the Niagara Falls Cultural Fund. Or, Niagara Falls Cultural Development Fund that we were sort of looking through different grants that Sarah applies for and stuff like that through the art community and we really came together to be able to actually start piecing this as an object together that we started doing zoom calls that we had never done before and everything's just like really came together to get us like focused that this is something that people want and that people are really looking to bring that happiness and joy back in our lives. Would you, say, would you say that's the inspiration or the, the symbolism behind the... Well, a lot symbolism? of the symbolism that is behind it, there are so many different types of it actually being a giant heart, being made out of like arms, it's kind of like a play on words, that it's like actual arms of a chair, like in the arms of love and stuff like that. But it really does show the symbolism that like how people need to hug and people need to be together and stuff like that. It's all about um, um, being able to bring loved ones and everybody coming back together as a community and that uh, really reaching out and bringing people together in your arms. That's literally like the focus that we were looking for, that the symbol of literally really bringing people together with your actual arms, trying to reach out, touch and feel people again after this whole entire pandemic we have where people are so separated right. and feeling so alone in this world. Right. When I heard of the Arms of Love from Meeting Niagara, and I knew right away that I needed to interview you and just from that piece alone because I, I know when I was able to go in, back into the arms of the people that I love, I truly found, found like true enjoyment and true encouragement that there is hope. I read an article back in March about um, hugging and it said how hugging boosts the immune system, and helps with our heart rate and our blood pressure, and all these wonderful health benefits. And I thought, wow, we should have been hugging all along, <laughs> right? And her mind being distant, but, right? but, but now that we're able to be closer again and uh, be with our loved ones, that really brings that hope and that encouragement back to our lives, that comfort, again, back into our lives to, to enjoy the unconditional love that we have for each other and that tr- the honesty, the trust that we probably have, it has, probably has built over the past uh, 15 to 18 months, right? It really has just due to the fact that so many people, just even as a community, aren't able to get together in spaces and stuff like that, that actually having the Niagara Falls Night of Art and people being able to come and showcase them, everybody from the community being able to come out and actually support <coughs> and see your loved ones where you can actually be together, even if at a small distance, that everyone is still able to come together in such an actual, like, appreciative way. So this Niagara Falls Night of Art, when is that? I'm going to leave this one up to actually Sarah. She knows a lot more about the Niagara Night of Art. It is upcoming here the uh, third week of September. Mm-hmm. It is September 23rd to the 26th, where September 25th from 6 to 9, Saturday night, will be the big event at City Hall. So just right across the street from the hub. Yes. Correct. Who is putting it on? Um, the Niagara Falls History Museum mm-hmm. and the Niagara Falls Cultural. Um, so, would you say In the Arms of Love was a project of the labor of love for I'll your team? <laughs> uh, well, as a collective, we love each other very much, um, and part of love can be a little bit of struggle sometimes. So, uh, there was, a, there were times that we had to stick to it, get through it and just get it done. But ultimately, I think that the, the final project is love, sweat, and tears. Mm-hmm. Because when there's tears, they, <laughs> <laughs> right? It's always, it's always going to happen. When your heart's in it, there will always be tears. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what would you say is the theme song that's playing in the background of the Intergalactic Artist Collective? I would say well, most of us, it's like where part of the name came from was like Beastie Boys Intergalactic. It's a lot about science, technology, future, art, weird stuff, all sorts of stuff coming together. Right. And uh, what would you say is your superpower? 
is there is there a group superpower or is there an individual superpower? I have? think being able to tell each other, let's kick it into high gear, which is one of our sayings that we say <laughs> to each other, yeah. and to be able to motivate each other and to take the other one's ideas and try to make them real. You know. Amy saw the legs in the back of my car and wanted them in a sculpture, and within four days we had them as part of one. So we just kind of think of things and work together to try to support each other. We didn't know how to make the legs sturdy, so David built it a base that was able to structurally sound and everything was fine. And then Amy had some beautiful silk left over that was upcycled from a, a bridal. <laughs> a bridal thing for we had a bolt of silk, so we wrapped that around with some fabric hardener, and off we go, and on to the next. Excellent. The superpower really is the, there is no challenge that we can't overcome as being a collective coming together, mm -hmm. that no matter what the challenge is, that we're literally willing to step up to it, meet it, exceed it, and just keep going, that we're always turning our dreams into creations. So there's power in numbers. And we're not afraid to learn. That's it. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, I can't think of a better way to end our conversation. Thank you very much, Sarah, Dave, and Amy for joining us today on the atrium. You, you truly have hearts of gold, <laughs> <laughs> and you really do. And being able to come together and work the way that you do within your team to provide such great um, opportunity and inspiration for Niagara, I truly appreciate you guys being here. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So Heart Niagara is a nonprofit charity that has been in the Niagara region for 44 years. Uh, it was designed and developed by Dr. Stafford Dobbin as a way to get information to people about how to take care of your heart. And 44 years later, we are still training nearly 10,000 people a year in CPR. We've placed over 900 defibrillators in the Niagara region. We see about 4,000 kids in schools. So that's just in two seconds, or maybe a little more, of what we do at Heart Niagara. But one of the things we found out is that uh, education is best disseminated through art. And uh, so in the last few years we've been doing MAR around our heart. And we actually did a project a while ago where people explained their uh, symptoms through art. And then I was fortunate enough this year to receive this piece uh, and look at just the anatomy of a heart using upcycled materials. So we are so happy to be able to showcase the work that artists do and share heart health information in a different way because it's where people can get their information and it's for everyone. Uh, here's just another facet of what we were able to do with 905 Intergalactic Artist Collective and that really was to showcase some of the other artists that are here in Niagara. So you can see there's other mediums here and the work people do at Heart Niagara. We're a nonprofit that's on Queen Street we're open every day from 8.30 to 4.30, so people have a chance to come in and just admire the work and celebrate the artists here in Niagara. So just take a look at what we've got here. We're always looking to do more and to showcase people from Niagara.